health organization calling an emergency meeting as cases of the China-born coronavirus spike. Officials now confirming it can spread from human to human. Airports on high alert. Bitter winter blast. The deep plunge up and down the East Coast right now. Miami bracing for near freezing temperatures as warming shelters open up across Florida. Frightening close call. A mountain lion grabbing a three-year-old by the neck. How his quick-thinking father saved him using a backpack. Royal reunion. New images this morning of Prince Harry arriving in Canada to start his new chapter with Meghan and Archie and leave their royal lives behind. An ABC News exclusive. Legendary rocker Ozzy Osbourne revealing his private health battle. I was in a shocking sight. What he's now ready to tell fans about what he's been facing. How his famous family is supporting him right now. Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. Good morning, America. Thank you for joining us on this Tuesday morning. And, and Robin, I gotta say, I'm looking forward to your interview with Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne. I spend time with them in their home over the weekend in L.A. It's, it's very personal. It's very candid. They're, they are ready to tell their story, and they have a lot to share. It could very well help others. But first, we are going to begin with the latest on the impeachment trial getting underway in Washington. Yeah, it is getting underway. Let's take a live look at the Capitol right now. That's the scene this morning. Here's how we expect it to play out today. At around 1230 Eastern, the two Senate leaders are going to lay out their takes on how the trial should go. Then all 100 senators will take their seats. The House impeachment managers and Trump defense team will take their positions. And Chief Justice John Roberts will gavel in the trial at 1. Our senior congressional correspondent Mary Bruce starts us off on Capitol Hill. And Mary, today will be consumed by a fight over the rules for the trial. Uh -huh. Yeah, George, before they even get to opening statements and the heart of this matter, this morning Capitol Hill is gearing up for a fight over the Republican rules that will govern this trial. The president's team says these rules will allow for a fair trial, but Democrats say they will prevent the American people from learning the full truth and amount to a cover-up. All of this is about to play out on the Senate floor in what is expected to be a contentious first day. Today on Capitol Hill, fierce debate over what President Trump's impeachment trial will actually look like. Republican leader Mitch McConnell releasing his long-awaited blueprint. Each side will have 24 hours over just two days to make their opening statements. It means senators could have to sit for 12-hour sessions, part of the Republican push for a faster trial. But Democrats say Republicans are trying to hide the president's misconduct in the dead of night. Then up to 16 hours of questioning from senators. After that, likely next week, they will vote to consider additional witnesses, something Democrats have been demanding, and even a few Republicans have supported. It's clear McConnell is hell-bent on making it much more difficult to get witnesses and documents and intent on rushing the trial through. We hope that four brave Republicans will resist McConnell's cover-up. The Democratic prosecutors and the president's lawyers have been intensely preparing. In the first glimpse at their defense strategy, Trump's legal team dismisses the impeachment as a brazenly political act and urges senators to speedily reject the charges. In a 110-page brief, they argue Trump did nothing wrong and say Democrats have failed to show the president broke the law. It has to be criminal behavior, criminal in nature. The articles of impeachment are two non-criminal uh, actions, namely obstruction of Congress and abuse so of power. It, but, let me... and... but many constitutional scholars disagree. Trump's lawyer, Alan Dershowitz himself, once argued the opposite during the Clinton impeachment, that a crime isn't necessary to impeach. So it certainly doesn't have to be a crime if you have somebody who completely corrupts the office of president. Democrats say the facts are indisputable and the evidence is overwhelming that the president invited foreign interference into the U.S. election for his own political gain. Now the trial will kick off this afternoon with what amounts to a procedural food fight as Democrats try to change and amend these rules. But George, the Republican leader is confident he has enough support to press ahead with this plan. At least for this first stage. Mary, the, the Senator McConnell has said that he wanted to follow the model of the Clinton impeachment trial 21 years ago. But there are some very significant differences between his model and the Clinton model. 
Yet, George, in the Clinton trial, all of the evidence that was gathered in the House was admitted right at the beginning of the trial. That is not happening here. They will have to vote later in the middle of the trial on whether to admit evidence. And this condensed timeline is something that is new. That did not happen in the Clinton trial. You didn't see these marathon back-to-back -back sessions. It is clear that Republicans here are now trying to speed things up. Democrats, of course, are crying foul. And George senators on both sides of the aisle are sure to be exhausted and cranky. It'll be a long fight today. Okay, Mary, thanks very much. As this trial is set to go, President Trump is at the World Economic Forum in Switzerland with an eye on what's going on back home. Uh, I'll be making a speech and then we'll be leaving shortly, uh, but I think it's very important. Uh, the other's just a hoax. It's the witch hunt that's been going on for years, and it's frankly, it's disgraceful, but uh, we look forward to being here. Our senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega is here, and Cecilia, the president is hoping to set up a series of split screens over these next couple of weeks. Yeah, and this is a very specific strategy. It's not just coincidence. I think we're going to be seeing this a lot over the next few days. The White House very much wants to show the president out there working, out there talking to world leaders, talking about the economy like his tweet overnight. It's the economy, stupid, in contrast with what you're seeing back here in Washington in this impeachment, which, of course, they're calling uh, this a sham. You know, he made him end up signing a trade deal this week, another split screen. But you said it. This is all headed toward the State of the Union. They want this wrapped up fast and they want these wins so that he can tick them off when he is there. In, in Claim the victory on yeah. the fourth. Meantime, he's added to his team overnight with some of his strongest House allies. Strongest House allies that you will remember from the House proceedings, people like Jim Jordan, Mark Meadows. These are uh, his allies on Capitol Hill, but also they are surrogates who he likes to see talking a lot on Fox News. That's the other strategy in this. The president and the White House want to see these, strat these, these surrogates out there shaping public perception. The president is very much concerned about how the, not just what happens in that chamber, but how the public views what is happening inside that chamber. He wants this to play out on Fox News to his base. We're going to see uh, these surrogates out there hitting the press hard. We're also going to see the legal team performing for that audience of one. We know that very much. He was involved in their choosing uh, that, that these are people who we saw on Fox News a, a lot. Um, this is we, we are told that this will not be boring. The president wants the fireworks today and he wants them to move quickly through this. OK, I know you and Mary going to join our live coverage of the Senate impeachment trial. I'll be anchoring with our political and legal team starting around 1230 Eastern right here on ABC. Robin? And George, as you know, the impeachment trial is having a direct effect on the presidential campaign this morning. This morning, four Democratic candidates who are also senators are forced to leave the trail, head back to Capitol Hill with just 13 days to go until the Iowa caucuses, the first votes in the nation. Eva Pilgrim is on the ground there in Des Moines, Iowa. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, Robin. Yeah, usually this close to the caucuses, the candidates are non-stop here in Iowa, but not this time. The president's impeachment trial pulling several off the campaign trail. Time is ticking in the Hawkeye state and adding pressure on at least some of the candidates, their duty in D.C. as jurors. I'm not going to be able to be here as much as I would like. So you guys are going to have to carry the ball. Four candidates, including top challengers Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, returning to Capitol Hill this morning, ready to take their seats in the Senate for the start of the president's impeachment trial. But before leaving town, the Sanders campaign getting in one more swing against fellow frontrunner Joe Biden, blasting out an email to supporters, quoting a column from a surrogate attacking the former vice president. Some think nominating Joe Biden, a moderate white man who calls himself middle class Joe, makes sense. But Biden has a big corruption problem and it makes him a weak candidate. Overnight, Sanders apologizing, saying, it is absolutely not my view that Joe is corrupt in any way, and I'm sorry that op-ed appeared. In response, Biden thanked him for the apology, tweeting, these kinds of attacks have no place in this primary, as Biden continues his own attacks, questioning Sanders' electability. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the midst of the fighting and feuding, the candidates seeming to put aside their differences for a moment. A show of unity, marching together at an MLK event in Columbia, South Carolina. Warren and Sanders even shaking hands and walking arm in arm. Just one week after a hot mic on the debate stage caught the candidates trading accusations that each called the other a liar. The longtime friends now attempting to move on before the votes are cast. And Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg both have, are taking full advantage. They both have jam-packed schedules here 
today. Michael. All right, it's good to see some civility between the candidates. Thank you so much, Eva. And now to that blast of winter weather up and down the East Coast. Wind chills could drop below freezing in Miami. And Ginger has all the latest. Good morning, Ginger. Hey, good morning to you, Michael. It's a good thing that the Super Bowl not taking place right now. That's what we're all saying. And we are sharing the air because one of the coldest mornings here from the Midwest where you see the lake effect snow that it caused in Cleveland, four to six inches, by the way, all the way down into the southeast. The frigid temperatures are on, not just this morning, but get even worse tomorrow morning. You see those numbers? It'll feel like 12 in Knoxville, 13 Raleigh. Look at Orlando, 21. Naples, 27. Yes, those are wind chill advisories all the way Way to the Florida Peninsula, the southern end there. Temperature in Miami, if it reaches 44, that's the coldest in two years. The wind chill will be sub freezing. If it gets down to 42, we tie the coldest in five years. So a lot of cold, George. Boy, there sure is. Okay, Ginger, thanks very much. We're going to turn now to those growing concerns about the dangerous coronavirus from China. The number of cases has gone from a few dozen last week to nearly 300 now, and health officials have confirmed that the virus can spread from person to person. Gio Benitez is at JFK Airport here in New York, where they're now screening passengers from China. Good morning, Gio. Hey, George, good morning. Yeah, the World Health Organization is holding an emergency meeting tomorrow to talk about this virus as more and more people get sick in Asia. And now we're learning this morning that the number of deaths is also growing. This morning, a major development as U.S. officials work to learn more about the mysterious new coronavirus and keep it out of the country. Now we're learning of new cases indicating that the virus has the potential to spread from human to human, proving that it does not only spread from animals to humans. At least 14 healthcare workers in China have now contracted the virus after treating infected patients. At least six people have died, and the number of confirmed cases has quadrupled to nearly 300. And it's not just China. Take a look. Since the virus first appeared in the central Chinese city of Wuhan last month, it has spread into neighboring countries like Japan, Thailand, and South Korea. Back in the States, the CDC screening thousands of passengers arriving from Wuhan at JFK, LAX, and SFO. Officials checking temperatures, looking for symptoms similar to the common cold, flu, or even pneumonia as travelers enter the country. At this train station in Hong Kong, passengers getting screened for the virus right off the train. Our Bob Woodruff speaking to one American tourist at the station who decided to cut his visit short. Is it kind of frightening at all to you that this is starting to spread? Oh yes, of course that's why I'm going home. And this morning, we're seeing reports from The Sun in the UK saying that a British tourist in Thailand, just 32 years old, may be the first Westerner affected by this virus. He's battling pneumonia-like conditions in the hospital right now. But again, we should tell you that so far, here in America, there are no known cases. Michael. All right, thank you so much, Gio. Our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Jen Aston, joined us now. And, and Jen, some big new developments. Yeah. Human to human trans, trans, transmission. Yeah. How concerning is that? It's concerning, Michael, because we're, we have to remember coronavirus normally exists in animals. As recently as just yesterday, there was a suspicion that it could spread animal to human, a suspicion it could spread human to human. Now that's confirmed. And obviously for most people, it's easier to avoid contact with animals than it is to avoid contact with other humans. And then what about the fact that 14 medical uh, workers, they've been sick as well? Yeah, you know, that's also significant. According to Chinese reports, these all 14 medical workers were taking care of one patient. And what that really brings up is the possibility of this phenomenon known as a super spreader. We saw it in SARS. That's one person who can literally infect hundreds or thousands of people. And again, a lot of this is it being informed by the experience with SARS, which so far is causing some concern. So how, how worried should people be here in the U.S.? Listen, we have to emphasize this is a dynamic and evolving situation. U.S. public health officials are still say saying that the risk to the U.S. population is low, but we have to be clear, we don't yet know how this virus spreads. We know it can be passed human to human, but we don't know how, and we don't know how severe it is. We're going to be looking for the mortality rate or the death rate with this. I'm sure we'll be talking to you a lot more about Absolutely. this next coming days. Thank yep. you, Doc. You bet. All right, Michael. Now to a group of college students lucky to be alive after their charter bus burst in the flames then exploded on a Mississippi highway. The terrified students, as you can imagine, ran for safety, and now they're speaking out about it this morning. 
Ariel Reichef is here with the latest. Good morning, Ariel. Good morning to you, Robin. Students on the bus say that they thought it had a flat tire, but then smoke quickly filled the cabin, everyone rushing to escape. Minutes later, they say the bus was completely consumed in flames and then exploded. This morning, these dramatic images, a harrowing scene on a Mississippi highway. A bus carrying University of Alabama students from a fraternity formal in New Orleans, igniting into a fireball. So we could see like a, a fire on the back end of the bus on the left side. And we need to, I mean, I just knew to keep going away just in case some kind of explosion could happen. 29 passengers racing to grab their belongings and get out of harm's way. You can see flames and thick black smoke shooting into the blue sky. By the time I got, the, got off the bus, it was completely filled with smoke. And I was just happy to get out of there like before the fire spread. Then suddenly, oh this loud explosion. Authorities say an unknown object fell from an 18-wheeler. The bus driver trying to avoid it, but the object piercing the tire of the bus, sending sparks flying. The charter engulfed as fire crews arrived. Only this incinerated shell left behind. I think if the situation was handled differently, then it could have gone south uh, very quickly. Now, everyone made it off the bus safely, thank goodness. Part of the interstate was closed down for about an hour while crews cleared the scene. Students waited for about two hours on the side of the road until another bus came by to pick them up. But as that gentleman said, it could have been so much worse. So much worse, and wow. he thought quickly. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ariel. All right, thank you, Ariel. And also this morning, we're following a history-making moment on the court. Last night, NBA su superstar Giannis Antetokounmpo, known as the Greek Freak, he became the sixth player in NBA history to score 10,000 career points. George is laughing at the way I said his last name. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Was that good, George? Uh, yeah, it was good. Okay, I'm taking it from you. All right. <laughs> I'm laughing at the freak thing. I don't like Greeks being called freaks. <laughs> <laughs> you took that too personal, George. Well, he already has an MVP award. Yeah. And uh, uh, by, by the time, and he's only 25, he's everybody. He's a youngin'. And he's a Milwaukee wow. Bucks star, and he said, quote, I could have, I could have never imagined coming to the NBA, and now I have 10,000 career points. And he didn't stop there. He said now he wants to go for 20 or 30,000 points. And he also credited his team, saying there's no one they can't beat. And Giannis isn't only soaring on the court, he's also soaring in popularity. He now has the second best jet selling jersey in the league, right behind the legendary LeBron James, but he is an, mm -hmm. an incredible, incredible player. player. Yeah, he yeah, he's really great. We are following a lot of other stories this morning, including Robin's exclusive emotional interview with Sharon and Ozzy Osbourne. They're ready to reveal a lot about Ozzy's painful year and his personal health battle. It's changed their family's lives. It really has. And the royal reunion, the new images of Prince Harry arriving to Canada to start his new life with Meghan and baby Archie. But now let's go back to Ginger. Yes, today has been a really wet start in Washington State for this year. And we've got flood watches up for this new storm that's going to make its way across the nation. The Cascades could get one to two feet of snow. By the time it gets over the Rockies, though, it means Chicago with a hit of snow, northern Missouri with that icy mix, and then it moves to the northeast by Saturday. You see the timing here? If you are away from the coast and granted this is a couple of days out uh, it looks like that's where most of the snow lands your local weather in 30 seconds first though the tuesday trivia is sponsored by nerd wallet Nerds. to all the people questioning right now questioning what kind of salad costs 14 dollars how do people just buy a house should i put this all on my card and get the points how can i get my credit score to go up wait am i supposed to be investing can i afford to fight this can i afford to do this can I afford the extra guacamole? To all those simply questioning, where do I go with all these questions? We've got your back. For all your money questions, turn to the nerds. Dress to stay warm again. It's another cold one with temperatures staying in the 30s all day. In fact, this morning, we're in the 20s. But we'll have sunshine around your 3 p.m. temperature at 38. Then higher temperatures coming our way for the remainder of the work week. We're at 50 degrees on Friday, 52 Saturday. Some cloud cover for Friday as we track the next weather maker. It's rain all day Saturday. In fact, probably some wind, too, with that system. Back to sunshine on Sunday. A little breezy, the high 47. All these Floridians messaging me saying, oh, I got my winter boots on. Well, just imagine being here in St. John's, Canada. That would be feet of snow piling up. They had a big one this past weekend. <laughs> wow. Yeah, covering the cars. Ozzy Osbourne is coming up. We'll be right back. Whatever happens out there today, remember, you have the Hilton app. Will the Hilton app help us pick the starters? Great question. No. But it can help you pick your room from the floor plan. 
Can the Hilton app help us score? You know, it's not that kind of thing, but you can score free Wi-Fi. Can it help us win? Hey, hey. We're all winners with the Hilton Price Match Guarantee, all right? Man, you guys are adorable. All right, let's go lose this soccer game. Come on. Book with the Hilton app. If you find a lower rate, we match it and give you 25% off that stay. Expect better. Expect Hilton. Wow. That's Insure Max Protein with high protein and...